Be seated. <laughs> Thank you for reading that warm introduction that I wrote. And thank you all for inviting me. This school has produced two vice presidents, two U.S. Supreme Court justices, 50 U.S. senators, 101, 101 representatives, 36 state governors, 34 U.S. ambassadors. And yet, this fine institution has chosen me, an actor, <laughs> to give your commencement speech this year which is an example of what I find great about our society and also what is completely messed up. <laughs> yes, I have found success uh, taking risks, uh, bulldozing my own path, marching to a different didgeridoo. But when I go to work, I put on makeup. I'd like to repeat that. I put on makeup which is reapplied throughout the day. And while this is all going on, it is being recorded on film. You could argue that this is silly, <laughs> and it is. So I was baffled uh, when being invited to today's event. I then learned that uh, President Williams is a huge fan of Daddy Daycare. <laughs> and, um, Diarrhea of a Wimpy Kid 1, 2, and 3. Um, thankfully, he hasn't seen some of my other major, major motion pictures, like Saving Silverman. Thank you. A tale about friendship and the lengths that one will go to preserve it. I was paid cash money to do naked yoga in that film. Or Strange Wilderness, a story of adventure. When, wearing, when hearing that my animal show is being canceled, my stone film crew and I travel in an RV to South America to film the elusive Bigfoot. On finding him, out of fear, we shoot him with automatic weapons. <laughs> so it would behoove you to listen to every word I say. <laughs> Whatever the reason is an honor to be here. I was asked months ago if I would be interested in giving this speech, and so, like most of you guys, when you have the term paper due last night, <laughs> I sat down and wrote this. It may come to a shock to some of you, but I do not have a team of writers writing me some zingers to zing. By the end of this, some of you will wish I had. <clears throat> okay, here we go. <laughs> 12.05 a.m., Make cup of coffee just to get the juices flowing. Have one, one beer just to balance the juices. <laughs> Write speech. 1.32 a.m., haven't written anything, watching Marathon of Hoarders, clean kitchen. <laughs> 2.05 a.m., kitchen clean. Idea, give them a list of invaluable golden nugget advice. One. If you get a dog, get a cat too. That way, one will love you unconditionally and the other won't give a crap. In life, that's called balance. <laughs> Two, learn to tie a bow tie. If you need an explanation of why, then forget it, just buy the perfect pre-tied one and look perfect. Three, don't listen to the same music your whole life. Venture out, explore. You don't read the same book over and over again. Four, dress for the job you want, unless the job you want is acting on Game of Thrones and you're actually interviewing at Capital One. <laughs> Five, learn to cook one great dish. Six, if you get a sack or make a touchdown, look like you've done it before. Let your work speak for itself. A little humility goes a long way. Seven, don't ever buy a hard rock t-shirt, even if it's for your little cousin, because eventually someone's going to see it. <laughs> Eight, vote. If you don't, then I could give a crap about your opinion. Nine, if it's a costume party, go all out. Don't just wear a goofy hat. Ten, be confident, but don't let it blind you. 
Example, American Idol auditions. Sometimes your mom is wrong. <laughs> 11, have a conversation. This excludes social media. 12, if you get a personalized license plate, please have it make sense to someone other than yourself. <laughs> On second thought, don't, don't get one, I'm dumb. 13, this is actually from my 13-year-old son. Try really hard, but not too hard or you'll get a headache. <laughs> Here, he's gonna go very far. Okay, 14. Just because you play guitar doesn't make you a musician. I can count, but you don't want me doing your taxes. Uh, and 15. If you opt for the butterfly tattoo on the lower back, great. Go for it. Remember, eventually it will turn into a dragon. 5 or 2 a.m., panic, worry about details. Will podium be of appropriate height, wood, or plexiglass? Will they let me hang my patent flag in back of my presentation? I don't know. 504, feed horses and goats. 605, wondering if watching ice road truckers could qualify as research. No. 615, say something inspirational. If you can't think of anything, don't worry, pull it out of your ass. Been working so far in life. Oftentimes, your weaknesses turn out to be your greatest strengths. Embrace them. I'm dyslexic. I spent my entire childhood thinking I wasn't as smart as other kids, so I had to compensate. So I did. I learned how to memorize and how to charm my way into extra credit. If we were reading aloud in class, which I feared, I would count chairs and figure out when my turn would come, and I would memorize the passage in my head while the other children read their parts. So when it came my turn, I was just like the others, but I was pretending. Ironically, memorizing things quickly and pretending is a huge advantage in my chosen career. Did I turn lemons into lemonade? Maybe. But more likely, I turned a disadvantage to an advantage out of sheer will and determination. Be passionate in the moment because you never know where it will lead you. I'm often asked, you know, how did you get into movies? And, and, the, and the truthful answer is I can't remember. I don't, I, I don't know. I have no idea. My goal in life was just to be a working actor, period. Just do the work and make a living at it but most of all, it was for the work. And back when I was living in New York, there was a play, Sophistry, that I, was, I desperately wanted to audition for. And I knew I was perfect for the part, but they weren't seeing any more people for it. And I knew they were holding their final day of auditions, so I decided, what the hell, I'll just, I scraped together some bus fare and I went into the city. And I just sat in the lobby hoping that they'd feel sorry enough for me to let me audition, and they did, and I got the part. And it turns out Ethan Hawke was in the play and set to do a movie with Ben Stiller directing, and uh, so I was, I was cast in the movie as well. That was my first film, Reality Bites. Was it me being in the right place at the right time? Possibly, but it stemmed from my passion for that play, for that role, for the moment. My sage advice to you young people about to go out into the world is take the back roads, the back roads, the ones that are, you get lost on, where it's hard to, to pass, where you gotta slow down because you gotta go through little towns. Not to say don't take the highways too. It's your turn, turn to merge onto the interstate, do it. Go 80. Scratch that. Get a, get a, a, a radar detector. Go 85. <laughs> but not around Bowling Green, because they'll get you, trust me. I'm serious. Um, head north. But remember, occasionally, you'll have to go east and west on your journey. And oftentimes, you'll have to go south, right back to where you started. 
there's no shame in that. Unless, like me, you end up in your parents' basement for more than three months. Seriously, sometimes starting over leads you to the road that you should have taken in the first place. But nothing is a waste of time as long as you're living every moment. And about the parents' basement, I, if you're paying rent to your mom, which is cheaper than the regular rent, then you can stay for six months, which my mom let me do, and then she kicked me out, which is great. And I thank her for that. <laughs> but about the speed limit, re remember the faster you go, the harder it will be to turn off on the back road. And the back roads are better. Trust me, they're the ones that you'll remember, I promise. The most important stories of your life, the person you end up spending it with, the friends you'll meet, the experiences you'll have that you'll, you'll share with your kids around a fire will almost always come from the back roads. Live a life that someone would write a song about, a simple yet beautiful song with a memorable tune and a, a refrain that you'll always want to sing. Unless you're tone deaf, then don't sing it out loud, just sing it in your head. You don't often hear a melody that moves you to tears about a CEO's climb up the corporate ladder. Not that you shouldn't be a CEO, or a doctor, or a lawyer, or an actor, or the president, but be that CEO who took the back roads on your way up. The long and short of this, don't be in such a hurry to get where you think you're supposed to be because you'll run the risk of missing the real opportunity. Live with integrity and passion. The people who make the decisions are the people who show up. Treat yourself and others well. Humility mixed with focused tenacity will go a long way. Buy a radar detector and go see my movies. <clears throat> You have accomplished something great. I admire you, and I'm proud to be speaking to you today. Although I, I don't want to go back, I remember the excitement and, and feeling of invincibility so, at your age. So go forward. No regrets. And take the back roads. 7.12 a.m. and speech. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs>